time for the Gore and More podcast. <laughs> And what's up, guys, and welcome to the Gore and More podcast. This is your host with the motherfucking most, TJ Bowser. And joining me, as always, is Big Johnny D. What's going on, Gorehounds? The killing machine himself, Bobby Amone. What's killing, motherfuckers? And Tyler Robofuck. Hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so this is our motherfucking Halloween episode. You guys will hear this drop in on Halloween because we already brought you an episode today with the lovely and talented Deborah Voorhees. I apologize mm -hmm. for the video because right now Bobby's uh, video source is literally taking up the entire fucking stream. But anyway, John Slice a Lifetime, what'd you do this week, buddy? Well, uh, pretty much just bullshit normal work. All that other good crap. Uh, Rock the Versus costume again this weekend at uh, some trick-or-treat events with the kiddos. Uh, even though the movie we are covering I've seen a million times, I sat down and enjoyed again for the millionth and one time. Uh, followed up by good old number two. Ooh. Not 2018 bullshit. I mean, <laughs> yeah, right. I'm going to throw that out right now. Um, <laughs> No, I mean, like, fucking dude gets smacked by a car within the first five minutes and lit on fire, and nobody gives a shit. There we go. Oh, that, is mon that is the Monday life of oh, that ben movie. Tramer. <laughs> yeah, it is, dude, for real. But uh, other than that, man, no. Did uh, Worked on some pumpkins yesterday. Did the old good old Halloween, uh, you know. It's the last little bit of our spooky season, man, so. Don't, don't, don't say that. Spooky Listen. season is all that. year, goddammit. You can't say well, that. Yes, it is. <laughs> I'm not saying it's not, but for most people and all our good Halloween shops, they're all going to be saying goodbye, but at the same I'm, time... I'm not crying live tonight. I'm Don't not do crying this to live oh, tonight. Friday, Friday, is, to me. This Friday is my Black Friday, man. That's when all Halloween shit goes fucking 50% off, baby. Yeah, <laughs> boy. On, dude. But uh, other than that, no, man, just a nice, easy week, and I've uh, been excited to do this episode. Bobby, how was your week, bud? Uh, my week was good. It was a very eventful weekend. Uh, let's see, Saturday. What did I do Saturday again? Sa okay, Saturday I was helping my buddy Chris out, uh, basically with uh, pet food advertising. I was taking pictures with dogs and cats and stuff what all day fuck? as Jason. <laughs> hey, listen, listen. Nice. I got some. I got some good pictures with them dogs. Let me tell you something. <laughs> they all love the killer. I got to tell you, <laughs> it was the weirdest thing ever. <laughs> but nice. it was great. Chris, Chris was awesome. It was great to do it. And then yesterday I had a show in uh, Asbury. I was dressed up as Jason again. I had a nice little Crystal Lake backdrop, took pictures. I sold some prints, and I had some do-back stuff with me. It was a small show, but it was it was fun. And then right now, as we're talking about Halloween, I have Halloween 4 on my screen as we speak. The perfect Fuck slasher yeah, film. Buddy. The perfect slasher film. Fight me, bitch. Uh <laughs> Robofuck. Uh, how, and, uh, yeah, Robofuck. How was your how was your weekend? <laughs> God damn it, guys. Uh, it it was, uh, it yeah, it was good. Uh, initially started off with the uh, Return of the Living Dead last week. So I got notes all over the Fuck yeah. <laughs> you are ready for next week, buddy. Hell yeah. Yeah, well, yeah and then all of a sudden TJ messaged me saying, you're doing this, right? Yeah. I, I got all my notes for Return of the Living Dead. He's like, we're doing Halloween. Fuck. <laughs> the funny thing is, so. that's a classic me thing to do. <laughs> that's bad. Right. Yeah. But it was kind of a double-edged sword, so it's such an iconic film, and it's one of my favorites. So I was like, fuck yeah, let's do it. Uh -oh. So are you guys ready to hear the story? Wait, what story? The one I've been hyping oh, up yes, all week. yes, 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 yes. The life. Tell Let's me a story, it. please. Okay, so Friday, I went and I had lunch with my brother, like an hour away, okay? And uh, if anybody knows me, I fucking pound drinks. You guys podcast me with me. I'm drinking all the time. I had four Diet Cokes sitting there for lunch. 
and then we decide to go home. So we're, we're heading home about 30 minutes out. I have to piss something fucking bad. Like, you don't even understand. No rest stop, and I'm not stopping along the highway. Fuck that. So we got two empty Coke bottles and an empty fucking thing of uh, from Dairy Queen. This sounds like a fun time. Okay, so... I already feel like I should start quoting Dumb and Dumber, dude. Okay. Well, I... Uh... I stop going once you start going, man. Well, Stay. since there's video now, I, I turn sideways, right? And in the seat, and Sarah's driving. And I, so I turn sideways, and I said, we're not stopping. I'm pissing. She goes, how are you doing that? So I grabbed the Coke bottle. So I whip my dick out, and I fucking try to aim it in the goddamn hole. Then I start pissing. And she hits a fucking bump, and my dick slips <laughs> out, and I start pissing all up the fucking, all up the fucking windshield, all over the dashboard, oh, all over the fucking door. And she's like, "What's going on? What is going on?" I said, "I can't stop pissing." So I, I, I like, fucking finally stop pissing, and I said, "Sarah, hold mm. this." So my hands covered in piss. I hand her the fucking bottle. And I grab the other bottle. And she's like, what are you doing? I said, I got to keep going. So I start pissing again in this bottle. <laughs> I fill up the fucking bottle, hand that one to her, and then grab the Dairy Queen cup. And I start pissing in the fucking bottle, in the, in the cup. The? So I finally finish up pissing. And then, she, so I sit there, fucking <laughs> cock still out, and I just sit back in the seat. And I'm covered in fucking piss. The whole fucking passenger <laughs> side is oh, just covered in piss. So I'm covered in <laughs> piss. And I said, do you have any napkins? She goes, no. I opened the glove box with not piss covered hand, no fucking napkins, and this bitch hands me, hands me little tissues. She goes, "This should help." So I'm like covered little, in like piss. The little one you keep in your oh yeah, the like the little fucking now. travel size tissues. So <laughs> I, I fucking pull up my, dry off my hands, pull up my pants, and start wiping off her fucking dashboard and her windshield and her fucking door, completely and totally covered in piss. So that's that's my pissing inside of my girlfriend's car story. <laughs> That is, bro. Oh, so, if you so to this, if I could, so yeah. I'm sorry for your car. That's all I gotta say. I understand you love him, but woo, yeah, kudos to you, yo. For... <laughs> all I can say is I'm glad it was just piss and you didn't have to shit. That would have been. Oh, the end of the movie. Oh. Oh. I can speak from experience, man. You always gotta have a Gatorade wide mouth in the car, dude. A <laughs> Gatorade wide mouth. <laughs> You got to get it in there, man. You can't just have the fucking hip kiss in the thing, dude, or else that's going to fucking happen, man. Yeah. Well, <laughs> guys, great. it is time for the Halloween review. So, <laughs> if you guys don't know, this is Halloween from 1979, directed by John Carpenter. 78, 78. What did I say? Two. 79. Cocksucker 78. Okay, directed by John Carpenter, written by John Carpenter and Deborah Left. Hill. Produced by Deborah Hill, starring Donald Pleasance as Dr. Sam Loomis, JLC as Laurie Strode, Nick Castle as Michael Myers slash The Shape, PJ Souls as Linda Van Der Klock, is that right? Nancy yeah. Kyes as Annie Brackett, Charles Cipher as Sheriff Lay Brackett, Kyle Richards as Lindsey Wallace, Brian Andrews as Tommy Doyle, uh, also played by Paul Rudd. <laughs> In 1995, yep. certainly true. Music by John Carpenter. Cinematography by Dean Cundy. Edited by Tommy Wallace and Charles Bornstein. Distributed by Bobby. Compass International Pictures. Released October 25th, 1978. Runtime of 91 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Budget of 325000 And this bitch grows $70 million. And I gotta pull up the trailer... So you guys just got to bear with me because I am by no means prepared, as always. It's been a shit day. It's been There's a shit day. There's a couple of good day. little facts. I know it says Nick Castle played the shape, but there was multiple people that, well, were not hey, credited. Hey, we got a behind the scenes for this, dickhole. Can you wait? Hey, hey, hey. I didn't say any names yet. I didn't say any fucking names yet. Bobby and I got to meet Nick Castle uh, at Monster Mania. I met him uh, three times. Three times. Well, I got to meet him for very the first nice. time. Here we go. Very, very, very nice guy. Very grateful, too. The, the one, one. The only. The classic. classic. Halloween. I don't hear anything. Halloween night. 
a small American town, 15 years ago. I love this shot. Up just through the mask. Michael? <laughs> Halloween. I spent eight years trying to reach him. Those people are and then terrible. Another seven people. trying to keep him locked up because I realized that what was living behind <laughs> that boy's eyes was purely and simply evil. Yeah! I think you'll come back. Exploring uncharted territory. It's totally charted. Just talk. Sure, sure. The only reason she babysits is to have a Halloween. I'll tell you what, guys. Jesus. <laughs> so, plot rundown. Who's taking this bitch? I'll do it. Okay. I don't have the notes in front of me, so you do it. I, I, I Jesus Christ, Bobby. Terrible. God damn it, Bobby! God damn it. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it, Hank Hill. God damn it, Bobby. God damn it, God God damn it Bobby! All right, go. All right plot <laughs> rundown. On a cold Halloween night in Haddonfield, Illinois, in 1963... Six-year-old Michael Myers brutally murdered his teenage hot naked sister. Yeah, I'm gonna say it. <laughs> Judith. <laughs> it's right. No. Although she wasn't as much of a whore as she was in Rob Zombies. Anyways, after she had, after she had sex with her boyfriend, which side note that was like a multiple of like 30 seconds. So what was that? Like four pumps and he was done. <laughs> we'll, go back to, we'll go back to that later. I got we'll more go on that. that um, we'll, we'll go through this later, John. Continue. Michael is then locked inside Smith's Grove, War Smith Grove Warren County Sanitarium, where he is placed under the care of Dr. Sam Loomis, who is one of the who is the one who sees pure evil within the soul of Michael. Six times. On October, <laughs> <laughs> on October 30th, 1978, Michael escapes from the sanitarium. After witnessing the escape, Dr. Loomis heads back to Haddonfield, where he knows Michael will kill again on Halloween night. Michael begins stalking three teenagers, Lori Strode, Lori Strode and her friends Annie and Linda. Fuck. <laughs> I had to say it like that. Everybody's, can I make it? Everybody's name in this movie is said in that annoying. Linda, Lori, <laughs> Lindsay. I'm like, oh my fucking God. <laughs> <laughs> I love this movie though. Don't get me wrong. Love it. If you don't, we got a problem. Listen, I'm already gonna say five out of five. I don't give I don't give a six out of five. Fuck that shit. Um there you go. Double it up. Alright. Dr. Loomis heads to back to Haddonfield where he knows Michael will kill again on Halloween night. Michael begins stalking three teenagers, Lori Strode and her friends Annie and Linda, with the help of their town sheriff. Loomis hunts for Michael and hopes to put an end to his grizzly murder spree. Chad, you are not here. Oh, uh, we're going to address the, the, the proverbial monkey in the room. Uh, Chad, once again, had an appointment with his gynecologist, 
and could not make it. Uh, Pap Schmear didn't go good so well last time. Huh? I don't think it did, so he had to go back in. I can't wait Sorry, to hear his reaction on Thursday. So, I hope they built from the that. gynecologist or from the from this? I'll, Which one? Whoever hits me up first, really. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you know his gyno, I'm trying to start to question some Oh, his gyno is my gyno, man. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it's a good gyno either way. Yeah, all gyno. So, yeah, I'm going to get a I'm going to get a mani pedi myself. So, you go to the gyno, I'm going to the mani pedi. <laughs> okay, so I got the behind the scenes notes, but is there anything we want to say before we get balls deep into this? Well, you know what? How about we let her, uh how about we let Tyler take this, man? He's our guest. Go for, it, and then we'll elaborate on what he says. Pretty yeah, much. man. So uh, give us what you give us what you feel about this movie, or how you feel about this movie. Full out. For well, I'm, honestly, I love the movie. I've always loved the movie. There's never been any question about it. The only, and I only ever had one question about it was who in the fuck taught Michael how to drive. <laughs> That's the only the question that don't I even had. Know. <laughs> right? Exactly. That was never addressed. So yeah. But other than that, no, I absolutely love the movie. Like, uh, you guys had said that you've already watched it a million times, but you get to watch it again. So did I. I think I watched it three times, even though I know the movie word for word, damn near. So, and it was interesting that I got to watch it with my wife now. She's trying to get into the horror movies, so that's that's really cool to do now. Fuck yeah, dude! And that's what a, what a perfect one to bring her in with, too. You know what I mean? Like, if Absolutely. you're gonna get with any of them, dude, this is gonna be hook, line, and sinker. And if it's not, well, then she's probably just not going to be in a fucking horror movies. Like, <laughs> or it's time to re wipe well, up. I did have up. her watch her, uh, ha- let her watch Return of the Living Dead, and she just weirded out by that, which I understand <laughs> going into that. Yeah, that, yeah that, that one I can understand. Yeah, a little weirded out. That's all right. Yeah. That's a step down for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> but uh, awesome, Bobby. I mean, you're the one with fucking. I mean, um, a mask in your room, that's, so let's get what you got. I say I don't know if anybody watching, if you see this, yeah, as you could tell, there's Michael's <laughs> spot over there. Um, I mean, like Tyler said, I love the movie. All the little idiosyncrasies that go with it, it's it's what got me to really love Halloween. Mm-hmm. I mean, I loved Halloween as a kid, but. For some reason, that movie just kind of was like, here, love it a little bit more because of this scary shit. And I was like, oh, so this is what happens on Halloween night. And that was the end of that. It, it, everything about it. The fact that Carpenter wrote it, directed it, did the music, was the mastermind behind it all pretty much. It's not every day that you have a writer, a, a director who basically can do multiple things which he later on in his career had to change for a movie, but that's for another movie for another time. But yeah, it's, it's getting, it's getting a 10 out of five, whatever we're doing. It's a 10. It's a right. 10. You know, I'm pretty, uh, pretty biased towards this Halloween franchise. It's don't you fuck with the TJ. I, I, I'm not. Okay. Halloween four was my introduction to the franchise. Uh, my father first showed me Halloween four. It was a good interu- inter- good introduction. That's a good intro. That's a good intro. Uh, and then I watched That's the other films, of course. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Halloween six. I don't care if you guys fucking hate it. H two O is arguably one of my favorites in the franchise. Fuck, I have a thorn tattoo on my fucking hand. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys can see it, but uh, I love the franchise, all the movies, uh, with the exception of Halloween 2018, because that is in fact a shit show, not like a good shit show like you're listening to now, but in fact a bad shit show. Uh, but that's just my opinion. Uh, m- many of you will agree with, like disagree and agree with me, but at the end of the day, it's just peanut butter on your penis. So. <laughs> <laughs> better than mayonnaise. That's better oh. than mayonnaise. <laughs> okay, oh, yeah. so we're going to get some uh, behind-the-scenes info going on here, guys. So uh, the lovely JLC has played Laurie Strode in films released in five different decades, from the 1970s to the 2010s. This film, Halloween 2 in 81, Halloween H2O 98, Halloween Resurrection in 02, if you take Buster Rhymes out, that film's pretty good, and Halloween 2018, Carpenter showed Halloween to an executive before it was finished. He showed the movie without the music. The executive didn't find it to be scary at all. Go figure. After the film was released and she saw it, she changed her mind. An indication of how much Carpenter's score adds to the film's atmosphere. Great score. The original script... Which, 
Uh, side note, I believe it was what three days he f- did that in. Yeah, he did it in three days. <clears throat> yeah, go and that's watch fucking the insane. Credit. If you go and watch the ending credits, it the credit given to music is given to the like the orchestra of the uh, high school or something, which is not true. I don't know why that was there, but if you go watch the credits, it's there. It says music. Maybe behind. they let him. Uh, maybe they let him use their music room or something like that, or one of their sound maybe, rooms. Maybe I don't know, but it's weird how that. Was so in if the you credits, guys, but... whenever I say these behind the scenes, if you have anything to expand on, whatever I say, just uh, whenever I'm done talking, just expand on it, okay? Yeah. So the original, yes, sir. Okay. the original script titled "The Babysitter Murders" had the events take place over the space of several days. It was a budgetary decision to change the script to have everything happen on the same day. Doing this reduced the number of costume changes and locations required, and it was decided that Halloween, the scariest night of the year, was the perfect night for this to happen. John Carpenter considered the hiring of JLC Jamie Lee Curtis as the ultimate tribute to Alfred Hitchcock who had given her mother, Janet Lee, legendary status in Psycho, 1960. Uh, we're going to do those films soon because I love one through three. Absolutely love the Psycho films. I've only seen the first one, honestly. And the 1994 first, literally first complete second, yeah, the, the first three are the <laughs> first three. On the female lead, or well, of the female leads, all the girls are supposed to be in high school. Only Jamie Lee Curtis was an actual was the actually a teenager at the time of shooting. Go fig. So, uh, John Carpenter and his lovely wife, Deborah Hill, have stated many times over the years that they did not consciously set out to depict virginity as a way of defeating a rampaging killer. Ooh. Yeah, that was just yeah, supposed to be... Uh, true too. <laughs> it was just more or less... It was supposed to give uh, a reason for the other kids... To be distracted. Oh, okay. Like, that's all it was. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't like, oh, they're being bad because they're having premarital yeah, sex. No. Just like, no, man, they're fucking busy boning. That's why they're not noticing this shit going on over here where Lori's not fucking doing anything. So that's why she notices the dude creeping at her in the fucking street and everything yeah, like that. that. Was, it was the never re- the intentions to, to have that as, oh, this is why you don't die. The reason why all the horny teens die is simply that they are too preoccupied with getting laid that they don't notice that there's a killer at large. On the other hand, Lori Strode spends a lot of her time on her own and therefore more alert. Okay. And this one, on. this one's fun. In the documentary short, <laughs> Halloween Unmasked 2000, 1999, actually, it was revealed that the crew had chosen two masks for Michael Myers to decide on. The first was a Don Post Emmett Kelly smiling clown mask that put the frizzy red hair on. This was I a- actually just watched this actually yesterday. It's on my DVD that I have for Halloween. No shit. This was uh, this. <clears throat> oh, this was an homage to how he killed his sister Judith in a clown costume. They tested it out and it appeared very demented and creepy. The other mask was a 1975 Captain James T. Kirk mask that was purchased for a dollar. Yep, and then a dollar can of spray paint. I believe it had eyebrows and sideburns ripped off. The face was painted fish belly white and the hair was spray painted brown and the eyes were opened up more. They tested out the Kirk mask and the crew decided it was much more creepier because it was emotionless. This became the Michael Myers mask. Uh, the only time I ever knew who William Shatner was, it wasn't because of Star Trek, because his face was used as a fucking killer. Yo, I'm going to say this, man. Only... And maybe not only, but I will say Carpenter is one of the only people out there that took a fucking $2 shit mask and made, and made it into stuff of nightmares for the last 40 fucking years, dude. Right. It is impressive. Yeah, it's and, – and if you watch the movie as it goes on, you can see underneath the neck that it, the paint kind of starts to fade away a little bit. And then in part two – it's all gone on the neck, and the mask is just starting to turn like a silver instead of the white. So, Because that was kept in a shoebox. Deborah did not let it out of her sight on the first one, and the second one, not so much. But, yeah, that mask was kept well. Nobody was allowed to touch him. Hmm. That mask is, like, deteriorated now, isn't it? it the, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dick Warlock was the stuntman on two, and Michael, he had the mask. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Bobby. Do you yes. have your Wi-Fi on? <clears throat> yeah, I do. Why? You are breaking up something bad. I don't know what's going on. Can you hear me now? You're coming in, Super Bros. Fuck. Hold on. hold on. We might not. Okay. 